Now, the profitability of the aviation sector at a time when a flying public is lamenting hike in airfare, when domestic airfare tickets in some cases are even higher than some regions. For example, tickets from Lagos to Accra, which is a short distance, is higher than flying from Lagos to Abuja. To speak on the implementation or the implication of profitability as it relates to aviation sector, is an aviation analyst, Godi Ike. You're welcome to Business Express. Oh, thank you very much, and I'm glad to be here. Okay, great. Today, when we talk to people about the aviation industry, the, the first thing you will hear is that air tickets are too high. They are way, way above the roof. Why is that so at this particular point in time? Yes, we know the, the economy, we have inflation there, we have issues of demand. But what exactly, from the expert point of view, what exactly are the issues and what's the way to go? <clears throat> yes, I want to uh, truly grant that uh, running an airline is quite an expensive uh, business. Um, you, you have uh, maintenance, especially, uh, that we don't have facilities to do here. So um, you have to do them uh, using uh, Forex, foreign exchange. And of course, with the depreciation of uh, Naira, it means huge, huge sums of money required uh, to do some of the checks that uh, will keep the airplanes you know, safe for us all to fly. Um, and then again, uh, uh, when this administration came into power, uh, there was this announcement of removal of uh, uh, fuel subsidy and everything jumped into the skies, including the aviation fuel. And so um, uh, if you put all those together, and then the cost of fair payment of uh, remunerations for the crew uh, and the rest of them, you find that um, it's, it's a big struggle really uh, to break even and then talk about uh, making profit. Uh, th that explains uh, why um, uh, the cost of flying is uh, soaring into the skies um, every day. However, uh, you know, there are, there are schemes in, in uh, that can be put in place if anybody would ever listen because I, I had hinted that during the FAN um, aviation conference uh, last year uh, when we were discussing uh, you know the minimum fare within Nigeria one, end to end um, I had made some recommendation at the time and um, uh, you know, <laughs> one particular airline chief executive was not happy about it, and uh, you know, uh, uh, really lashed out at me, you know, for daring to say that we should cut down the fares. But then again, but but, but uh, did, did you did, in making that recommendation, did it, you yes. consider issues of demand and supply and some of the challenges you've you've mentioned? Before uh, you get to also. Answer, answer that. I, I, I want to say you, you mentioned, yes, cost of maintenance and following the removal of fuel subsidy, everything yeah. went to the roof. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have such of these facilities in the country to maintain some of these. A lot of them go to Europe, the mm -hmm. United States, mm -hmm. uh, and all of that. Yes, mm -hmm. also yes. the Forex challenge, but you also understand that, talking about Forex, uh, the, the federal government through the central bank had settled almost 100% genuine claims mm -hmm. on Forex backlog. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that would have helped? Don't you think that will still help? No, I'm uh, also that we're expecting the, the Dangote refinery to come full-fledged on stream. Uh, are we expecting much more jet oil, talking about aviation fuel? Would that also affect the prices, talking about downward review? Um, uh, I don't see at the moment, uh, uh, for instance, Dangote refinery you know, coming on. I don't see how... Uh, uh, prices will quickly, you know, slash to a point that will make life uh, uh, much easier for for Nigerians. Uh, in the sense that um, uh, the the crude that uh, you know they will need to refine to get all these products will still will, will still be supplied, you know, at the international you know market rate. rate. Yes, market rate. And so, um, uh, yes, it may come down slightly, but not as much as uh, it would have been had, had the subsidy not been you know, removed. Um, what has created this whole uh, 
you know, problem we have on our hands right now is the removal of subsidy without giving due consideration to our peculiar situation, uh, you know, as a nation. You know, however, um, if uh, government continues to support the uh, the Dangote refinery and uh, encourage them to, uh, you know, minimize the the profit they will be looking for, uh, there should be. Uh, a slight uh, cut in price. However, when it concerns aviation, I do not think that um, uh, uh, we can really have these uh, 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 airlines slash, you know, the, the cost of their airfares uh, without carrying out s certain schemes that uh, uh, countries like India, you know, put in place. In order, in so, order. So, so can you briefly tell us the, the Indian experience that you think Nigeria uh, can uh, well, yeah, well, um Well, they did something that is known as uh, uh, interconnectivity scheme. Uh, the, the details, the details of this uh, uh, discussion I'm, uh, I'm I'm holding with you right now uh, can cannot be all ruled out on uh, you know uh, on air because. Uh, some of them contain intellectual property assets that um, if the day the authorities need to hear them formally, they consult and will tell them how it works. Uh, there was an opportunity during uh, a conference where I had mentioned we have to do interconnectivity scheme and then we have to also do what is known as cross subsidization scheme. These are the schemes that if you put them in place, you will enable all categories of uh, the flying public, no matter what level uh, that individual. In India, for instance, the so-called poor can fly from one end of India to the other at affordable rate. And the rich can also, you know, you know fly in comfort, paying a little, a, a little more. So we need to look at these schemes I have them in graphic details, on, you know, and if anybody wants to really uh, know about it and learn about it, they should consult, and then we'll put them on, on, on the table, take a look at how we can uh, redesign the interconnectivity of, uh, of flights in Nigeria and then make it possible for all airlines at all times to, to have full load of passengers at you know, uh, lower fares and still make profit, and still be able to maintain their airplanes, do all the checks as, as and when they're required. These days, what do you find? The raking all the huge sums of money, the, you know, move, move them to other assets. They, they don't keep them within the airline. And then uh, shortly after, the plane is due for a C check, or, or, or a B check, as the case may be, depending on the, the age of the, uh, of the airplane and how, how much is being used. And then they begin to announce that they, they don't have money to get this done. Uh, for instance, one of the airlines uh, just um, a week ago uh, wrote to all the workers to go on leave without pay. Without pay. At this time in Nigeria. It's, 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 um, it's, it's unacceptable. We, you know, we can't, we, we can't run such sensitive industry in such a reckless manner. It, it has to be controlled. And somebody has got to really, you know, sit down and plan out this. I, 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 have, I have made it clear during the conference, and I'm sure another conference is coming very shortly. If, if I'm invited, I'll continue to say the same thing. We must plan our aviation sector in a way that those that, uh, for crying out loud, the longest route in Nigeria is Lagos Medjugorje, which is just merely one hour, 20 minutes or, 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 or thereabout of flight. That's the longest route. The rest of the routes are 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, and, and all those kind of uh, stuff. But in India, you have a route that is as long as three and a half hours. Within India? Within India. And yet, the poor are able to fly when, when necessary without uh, you know, breaking their backs. But here, even the middle, middle class can't fly anymore. 
it's, it's just out there for only for the rich. Well, so what is the way to go? Be, be, before the, the people concerned might, might think of consultancy, which NTO is going to have a court for giving the opportunity <laughs> for that, <laughs> for giving the opportunity for that. What is the way to go for now? Well, they have got to, especially the airlines and, of course, the regulators. Um, I, I, I must say that um, I am I'm quite impressed with um, uh, NCAA. It's, uh, it's like I always describe that it's a thankless job that they are doing because nobody no understands the pressure that, you know, they, they, they go through with these airlines and to, get the, to weave them into a line and you know, weave them into place to do what's appropriate. However, they, they still find ways of um, you know, cutting corners and not doing exactly what they are required to do. Um, uh, we've, got to, we've got to sit down, take a look at all the destinations that we have in Nigeria and the volumes of each de destination, then create th what I have described again as interconnectivity scheme. When we, when we create those, we then again sort out the big, the, the, the you know the uh, medium and the and the small among the airlines, and then develop uh, what is again I've called cross subsidization scheme. In that way, everybody is leveled off, and and then it follows again that when there is need for maintenance, the airlines won't be breaking their heads because the funds. For those maintenance would have been put away, and uh, you know, uh, and so uh, as soon as an air airplane is due for a check, that airplane is you know taken out. And, okay, uh, okay. Let, let me hold your thoughts on yeah, that yes. for now. Now that brings me from the it took off from the issue of connectivity within the country. We've also had uh, just foreign airlines come into Nigeria and go out following um, the huge market in Nigeria is mm. got not just in Africa but in the world. And the fact is, Nigerians love to travel. Mm. Now we have an indigenous airline that has decided to go on the route of a frequent route, talking about Nigeria, UK, London travels, and and mm. the US. Yes, and we're having issues with this indigenous airline having landing space in, in the biggest um, airport in the United Kingdom, talking about uh, Heathrow. What does that do to trade relations between both countries? A relationship we've had long, long even before, um, will, will I say, independence? I'll put this squarely on the laps of Mr. Minister, uh, uh, you know, SAN, uh, Barisha Kayamo. Um, this business is a business of teeth for thought. You, if, you, if you do me well, I do you well. If you, if you think I need you, I want to tell you that you also need, need me. me. I mean, it's, it's unthinkable to, to hear and know that an airline, a foreign airline will come to Nigeria, drop passengers in Lagos, take off, drop another set of passengers in Port Harcourt, and perhaps take off uh, and go to Kano, it's unthinkable. It's not done anywhere in the world. It's only, it happens only here in Nigeria. If you are giving a slot to any foreign airline, they must choose where they want to land, and it has to be one. The rest of the connectivity must be done by local, local airlines. airlines. These are some of the things I wanted to you know, straighten out and set out for them as researched and seen to be Foolproof. It works. If only somebody somewhere would listen. Once we you know, develop this interconnectivity scheme, you find that all the airlines will have business running every day from one end of the country to the other. If British Airways, for instance, chooses that it wants to be landed in Lagos, it's all just Lagos. Because as soon as you come to Lagos, you're already in Nigeria. Every other flight of the passengers in that airplane must be done by the local airlines. And because we have developed a proper interconnectivity, even before the plane arrives, the passengers already know which plane will take them to Enugu, to uh, Benin, to Port Harcourt, to Kano, to Sokoto, to Medjugorje, and the rest of them. 
Okay, talk, talking about local connectivity, we yes. still have an incessant cases uh, of uh, flights uh, not just being delayed, uh, but uh, flights being cancelled and there is no adequate compensation, though the FCCPC have tried to intervene in so many cases. Uh, how can we better handle such a situation to ensure that the flying public is, is, is given value for their money, more so that air travel has become the surest way these days, apart from the railway that is upcoming. My dear, you've really touched on the sore point. And I must tell you, the, the, the problem we are having is that the airlines are riding on the fine lines on, the, on their tickets, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe to you what I mean by fine lines. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a legal jargon that has to do with putting all kinds of conditions for the services you are receiving, which, when you pick up the ticket, is said to have been you know, signed off, that you agree with all these conditions, uh, where the, the laws are put upside down and downside up, and then as you try to make a sense of all the conditions are put in there for you, you find out that you can't pin down the airline hmm. on you know, a, a liability when they do what is wrong. Those, those are what are described as fine lines in, you, know, they, you have in the, in the tickets, as against when you have bright lines, the, in which case this is the law. If you move right, you get it right. If you move to the left, you get it wrong, and it's, it's established that that is the law. Unfortunately, with the air tickets, you never know which is right, which is center, and which is left. And so all those jargons are in there. If you sue them to court, um, uh, it, it will all amount to uh, you know, a waste of time. So at the end of the day, those that would do this job remain NCAA. And in some cases, FAN, the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. the, the, they've got to take charge and ensure that the airlines do what they need to do, take responsibilities for, for their actions. And, and if they don't, they use the airport facilities to punish them. So, um, so the, 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 the patent word for you now is for yes. the regulators, for the supervisors to get to do their work so that the aviation industry will thrive much more than it is. Oh, well, yes. Well, this is an ongoing conversation. We'll yes. get to continue some other time. Thank right. you so very much. Godi E.K. for sharing deep experience and thoughts at this particular time mm -hmm. on the way to go for the Nigerian aviation sector.